This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Okay, we're back. We're live. We are doing, gee whiz, uh, Finding Your Jewish Heritage on Community Matters, I think. And um, this is a very interesting discussion. This is really historic. It takes me back. Uh, with Manny, make that Manuel Matos. Uh, he's a Portuguese person uh, with Jewish uh, heritage. Um, this reminds me of so many, a book, for example, called The Chosen. And it was about a priest in the in the state of New Mexico, who mm -hmm. sent a, a, a DNA sample in, you know, like the Ancestry, one of those, mm -hmm. came back and he told them, well, he thought he might be Mexican, he thought he might be Catholic, he thought he might be, <laughs> <laughs> but in fact, he was 98% Jewish. So in this book, it's very interesting, that the, um, the priest goes to his congregation, he says, you know, I don't want to, you know, disturb you, but in fact, um, I'm not Catholic, really. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm not Spanish or Mexican. I'm actually, I'm actually Jewish, 98% Jewish. And what happened in this small town and with this small Catholic church is they all decided to follow along with him, and he created a liturgy which was half Catholic and half Jewish. And they, all his, you know, parishioners began to, you know, follow him, and they all prayed in sort of both contexts. And when the Pope found out about this real story, real story? the Pope was not happy. <laughs> <laughs> but it just shows you that sometimes, you know, it's like the ancestry ads. Sometimes you think you're one thing, but maybe you're a combination of things or something else you didn't think. Anyway, Manny Matos with a story to tell goes back to 1492 and the Inquisition in Spain and how, uh, I guess, uh, uh, Isabella and uh, what was the name of the king then? Ferdinand. <laughs> the they were the same was, yeah. ones who dispatched Columbus. Yeah, yeah. They had this really bad inquisition in 1492, same mm -hmm. year as Columbus. Okay, they threw all the Jews out and they made them go undercover. Yeah. A lot of them went to Portugal. Thousands okay, and you might be related. So tell us your story, Manny Matos. <laughs> okay, first of all, thank you, dear, for uh, allowing me to come on this program. I, mean, I, this is, I think uh, all the programs that I did, this is the most personally meaningful for me because it goes to my personal genealogy and who I am, really. I didn't know who I was, really. I thought I was Portuguese all my life until about maybe 10, 11 years ago. I was using my computer and I typed in Matos Ancestry and pops up, here pops up this, according to the Catholic Church of Spain, Matos is a Jewish surname. So I almost fell off the chair. I said, well, what is this? Nobody told me I might have some Jewish ancestry in me. So I started to do some research and ask other people. And, <clears throat> and all the things that I've been doing is kind of confirming what the Catholic Church of Spain you know, has, 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 had documented. Wow. And from then on, I kept on researching and researching. And it's really interesting, the, the, the last name Matos is, is documented as being a, a, a Jewish name. You know. According to, uh, I just got this, this paper here, in, uh, in the 1600s, when they had the Inquisition, I didn't know how devastating the, the Inquisition was to the, to the Jewish population. You know, thousands of them were, were tortured, were killed. And uh, the ones that went to Portugal, uh, they kind of blend in, and, but their names stayed with them. And uh, this, is the, this is an Inquisition trial that was done on Mr. Furtado. Uh, Portado. Portado, yeah. Also a Portuguese name. Portuguese right? name. Yeah. And it's, it's well documented because uh, during his trial, he, he documented names and everything. And part of it that when he fled, he, he, he went to Lisbon and he stayed with uh, people like Cardosas. Uh, he visited the new Christian community, which they were disguised as Christians, but they were yeah. still practicing Jews. Yeah. And the names were uh, Diego de Matos and his brother. Joaquin de Matos, and he stayed with other people during his stays, like people like with Jewish, I mean, Portuguese name, like Fernandez, Olivardo, Rodrigues, Gomes, Cardosas. So by reading all of this, I said, wow, there might be some truth to uh, And it kind of explained it to me why, or my kind of, the way I think, the way I reason, you know, there had to be something else that would explain that. So, and uh, so I wondered, 
did my parents know about it? Did my father, did my grandfather, yeah. did his grandfather? Yeah. And I, the more research I did, uh, <clears throat> the more I, I kind of realized that I don't know if they knew, <laughs> for one thing. If they did, uh, it wasn't talked about. Maybe they were afraid of retaliations, you know, by, by son being a sure. Portuguese. It was Jewish. already in the culture. Don't yeah. say a word, yeah? Don't say a word, you know. Uh, you're Portuguese, you know. No, don't talk about your, your background. Yeah. And so when uh, my great-grandparents came here in 1883, you know, and I always wondered, why would the Portuguese from the Azores travel halfway around the world to a strange islands what, what motivated them to do this? And the more, the more research I did is, the Azores, the, the Jews are really persecuted back in the middle 1800s, the late 1800s. So a lot of them wanted to get out of that because they, were, they, they weren't able to, they were strictly in fishing and commerce. So I kind of understood why it was so hard for them to live in that, that environment. Even so, in the Azores, yeah? Even in the Azores, yeah. yeah. Which is off the coast. It's a different Yeah, it's about place. 900 miles. Yeah, seriously uh, different. Yeah, yeah worst of, but the Azores were settled by a lot of Jewish immigrants that came from Portugal and Spain back in the uh, 1500s. Yeah. So it, it, uh, it, it kind of got me uh, <laughs> really surprised. You started thinking about it. Yeah, I started thinking about it. And I was saying, well, maybe my Portuguese, uh, which I perfectly love to be Portuguese, but if I have some Jewish ancestry, I perfectly would like to be or know more about my Jewish ancestry. Yeah, sure. And what an interesting thing I found about it is, the further I went back... So you started a, an inquiry. You started <laughs> yeah. checking up on this. Yeah, I started you to check up myself. A project. It was a project. It you was, had to find out more. Yeah, yeah because I'm, most of my time I've been checking on my wife's project, which is Hawaiian genealogy. <laughs> I never spent too much time on my Portuguese genealogy. But maybe you learned a, a few things from her. As she was checking, <laughs> you did your own checking. Yeah. Especially when I tell her, I said, you know, you might, you might be married to, married to a half Jew. She go, half Jew? <laughs> I kind of I surprised her with that. But what's interesting is, I, I, I did some research on this Jewish uh, historian, and, and, uh, and I find out we go back as far as 2,000 years, back to the time of uh, Spain and uh, to the descendants of David. King David. King David, yeah. It's because Jewish genealogy is, is so complex and it's so, you know, you have and the diaspora where people went everywhere. Right. Yeah. When, yeah, when they dispersed throughout the Mediterranean. Yeah, yeah. You know, but this guy is telling me that these names go back to King David because King David had 20 children uh, from his official wives, and he had over 100 children from his lesser wives. And he's telling us that David's descendants run about 85 to 100 million people that can trace their descendants back wow. to King David. And I'm looking at... But he, and he mentioned names that could be associated with that family name. The family name, yeah. you know, and, and you got if you want, I can name like Cardozo, Cardosa, Cardoza, Cardosa, Matos, Amaral, Alameda, <laughs> Pereira, <laughs> Oliveira. We've heard these names here in Hawaii. Yeah, these, yeah. These, these are names that are these common, are common in the Portuguese, Portuguese names. community. Yeah. And I don't think any of them have the faintest idea of how far back the, the, the genealogy. This picture I have here of... Why don't we focus in on that, take a look at this picture. <laughs> what, what, what is this picture, Manny? These you are know, old photographs. Where did you are, get them? What yeah, do they these say? These are photographs of the, of the 1920s when the Portuguese people came from the Azores. They formed little communities and uh, they brought along their, their Catholic uh, beliefs and their Catholic background and their practices. Yeah. And the Portuguese festa, honoring the Holy Spirit, was one of the main, and this is in, in the Kaka'ako area. Ah. That's where I come from. Ah. My, my great-grandparents, they're, they're actually from Hilo, but they migrated to uh, Kaka'ako. It was a big community, a residential community. Oh, there. yeah, Ma yeah. Makai of Ala Moana, yeah? Yeah, and on uh, Ward and Cook Street. And oh, oh, in there, too. Ma Malka, too. Mother okay. Walgren Parks. Okay, all okay, that area okay. was all was all. It was a teeming neighborhood at one time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was, you know, that's the, that's the, 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 uh, 
I remember as a young kid, because I was born in that area back in 1941, I was yeah. raised uh, in, in that area. So yeah. in, in the 20s, 30s, I remember as the 40s, 50s, as a young man going through these fashtas, but I got these very old pictures and I can, I look at them and I see all these the Portuguese immigrants. And to me, this looked like, in like the 50s, the, the golden age of uh, music, this looked like the golden age of, of the, the Portuguese people back in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, where they really were, you know, a community. They, they were involved in. Well, but we're talking about here in Hawaii. Yeah, in, we're talking about it in Kaka'aka. In we're Kaka talking about it in Punchbowl. Mm. This is this is the first one was actually was done in Punchbowl back in uh -huh. 1891. What is that? This is this is another Portuguese uh, Holy Ghost. But this one was started in 1891. This one was started in 1916. So they, they developed this, and Kali had one, and the other islands had one. But, and, and I look at that, I says, how, much, how many of these people here really understood who they really were, and, and how significant their heritage is as far as being Portuguese and possibly of Jewish ancestry? Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. so. I mean, because, because it all got blended somehow, uh, since what the year 1500 or so, till till they came over from Portugal or the Azores, and um, it's hard to say who was who. You really had to have a, a genetic test. <laughs> well, I figure out the name. The name <laughs> gives it away too. Yeah, the names were the were, were really gave, like how you say gave it away. But what I further found out too is a lot of the, the Portuguese Jews came from Morocco area, northern Africa. They came into the Azores, they came into Portugal. So that's the reason why you have Portuguese that have different complexions, a lot of them darker, a little bit lighter, because they had that Moroccan uh, Muslim background. Yeah, yeah. Well, even today, I mean, just a year ago, I was in Portugal, I spent some time in Lisbon, and mm -hmm. I saw a lot of people from Africa there. Right now, everybody's very comfortable with that. That's the way Portugal is. It's kind of, uh, it's in an exchange somehow with Africa. It's been in exchange with North Africa for many years, hundreds yeah, of years. Yeah, they, had, they have a history of, of, you know, yeah. of the culture being interactive. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and it, it was kind of, and <laughs> I, uh, the more I dug into it, the more I confused I got. <laughs> because it was, it, you know, it was never discussed in, 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 in our family circle, you know, as far as, because I don't think they really knew, you know, and how, how uh, yeah. and the more I dug into it, the more intrigued I was, and it was funny because I had, a, I had a good friend, him and his wife, on the Big Island when I was living there, and he was Jewish. He had two sons, they were really Orthodox Jews. Both of them were doctors, so I was invited to one of the son's weddings, and. Uh, so we went there for the wedding, and it was kosher, you know, <laughs> kosher. And I think to myself, what is kosher? <laughs> so he explained to me, no pork, no this, no that. You know, I said, oh, okay, good, good. So when I'm walking to, uh, into the reception, he said, Larry, he says, Manny, here, you got to wear this. I said, what is that? He said, that's a yarmulke. <laughs> so I said, what? He said, yeah, all the men have to wear a yarmulke. <laughs> I said, okay. And till today, I still have the same yarmulke. Oh, that, okay. that, that he gave Show me. it to the people. That, that, that he gave that's me. That's a yarmulke. Yeah, this, okay. is, this so is the yarmulke. Cap, they call it, it's yeah. about, yeah. It, <laughs> I wear it sometimes, <laughs> and I drive people nuts. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know? But uh, what, I wore it that night, and I, I tell myself, wow, you know, uh, this is part of where I came from, you know, yeah. and I'm not, I'm not belong to the Jewish faith, you know, but I believe strongly in, in you know, and in, uh, in who I am and who I might be, you know, so <laughs> when I wear this, sometimes I wear it to church, Catholic church, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you a story, <laughs> real funny, I, I, I wear it to church, then at, at the, when they consecrate the bread and wine, I take it off, you know, to show it, but maybe you can Fair explain enough. what, what's, what's the symbolicness of this here? Well, I think it's a statement that, that you believe in the Jewish religion, that you consider yourself Jewish, that's a statement of respect for God. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know too much more about it than that. <laughs> anyway, anyway. It's been going on a long time. I man. know, I know. So uh, one day, uh, Latino Bishop was at, and his name, his last name is Silva. So yeah. Silva is a Jewish surname, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. So How interesting. But anyway, he, he saw me with his, with his yarmulke on, and he, he comes up to me, Manny, 
I didn't know you were Jewish. <laughs> you're Jewish. I said, no, I'm not Jewish. I'm Catholic. <laughs> I said, I just wear this, you know, for. Well, I want to explore that. I want to explore that with you right after this break. Okay. That's uh, Manny Matos. Uh, he's a Portuguese person with a Jewish heritage. We're talking about finding your Jewish heritage today on Community Matters. We're so excited to hear his story, hear his journey, hear his inquiry, and see the kinds of things he's learned over the years since this kind of crossed his bow. Manny will be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Aloha. I'm your longtime host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, for Sister Power. Think Tech is important to our community because it, it motivates, it empowers, it educates all people. For the first time, Think Tech Hawaii is participating in an online web-based fundraising campaign to raise $40,000. Give thanks to Think Tech, where we're only during the month of November, and you can help. Please donate what you can so that Think Tech Hawaii can continue to raise public awareness and promote civic engagement through free programming like mine. I've already made my donation and look forward to yours. Please send in your tax-deductible contribution by going to this website, think, thanksforthinktech.causevox.com. On behalf of the community enriched by Think Tech Hawaii's 30-plus weekly shows, thank you for your generosity. We are so excited and so interested to be with Manny Matos, a Portuguese person, local Portuguese person from the Azores, as so many are, uh, who has found um, that his name is Jewish and he has a Jewish heritage. It's really incredible. And he's been, you know, like exploring this in his life since then and sort of adjusting his sights somehow to some account for this new wrinkle of his identity. This is so interesting. And good for you that you make a search about this, that you, that you think about it, that you inquire about it, that you, you know, maybe change your way of thinking. And I want to ask about that. You mentioned during the break that you have two Bibles at home. <laughs> you have the you have a Catholic Bible, mm -hmm. a Jerusalem Bible, mm -hmm. and you also have a, a, a Jewish Bible, a Hebrew Bible, a Hebrew yeah. Bible. That's uh, the, you know, the first testament, the first, uh -huh. uh, the first. Um, you know, we call it the Old Testament. The, 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 the Old Catholic, Testament, yeah. yeah. Um, and so I, I just like to know how you handle <laughs> the differences, where they fit in your life, how you see them whether this has changed your way of thinking as a Portuguese Catholic person raised in that faith? Uh, well, it, it, uh, I always uh, had interested in theological uh, learning. You know, I, I, I don't know if I'm a good Catholic or not, but I, 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 I believe you never stop learning about your faith. You know, even if it takes you in different directions, you know, and uh, like I say, it took me into a, into a Jewish direction. Well, yeah, you have to have an open mind yeah, to do that. Yeah, so you, gotta, you, know, you start out with an open mind. Yeah, right? you start out with an open mind. And if it is what it is, it is, you know. And uh, what's, what was it really got me uh, you know, surprised really is in, in, on this gentleman. And one of the statements he makes here is uh, that the, the uh, Judas of Gamalha was a cousin in the second or third grade of Jesus of Nazareth. So his, because in the Jewish faith, they believe Joseph was the biological father of, of Jesus and Mary was it. So what he's saying, if, if Joseph was the biological father of Jesus, then I am, I am related to Jesus to Joseph or, or Mary, which, hey, it's... Jesus was Jewish. Yeah, he was Jewish. So that, that doesn't... Uh, deter my faith, or you know, uh, or lessen my, my belief in in in, in uh, you know in my religious beliefs. But it's all these things that that come into play, you know. As, you know, uh, uh, and and I think a lot of Portuguese people, if they understood this, they would embrace uh, who they are a lot, a lot, a lot more openly. You know, a lot more openly, and they could understand a lot more who they are. Yeah. yeah, because as far as when, what I'm learning now is 
as a young man, I used to, uh, I, I was, uh, a lot of thinking that I used to go on. I used to ask questions, why this, why this, why that? And even origin of life, you know, and, and I didn't understand why I would be thinking like this. And uh, all through my life, I, I, I always ask questions, ask questions, ask questions. And, and uh, everybody would tell me, why do you ask so many questions? <laughs> I said, well, <laughs> maybe it's something that's my DNA. Maybe it's your DNA speaking, yeah? <laughs> my DNA speaking, you know. You got to ask a question, you know. How are you going to know the answer if you don't ask the question? So when I found out about the, the, the Jewish uh, in influence, I, I kind of understood maybe that's one aspect of my, my genealogy or my genes that I didn't understand. You know, I thought I was being too aggressive or this and that, but I wanted to know answers. You know, I, I, I don't have that much education. I only went high school. You know, I, I, I got married when I was 21. What, what was your career? What has been Well, I career? started as a young plumber. I, I became a, uh, I went through the, the ranks, uh, working foreman, foreman. Then I changed careers about 29 years. I became a policeman. Yeah. And I stayed policeman 20 years and became a plumbing inspector. So, but the bulk of my education, I think I got, I went up between the first and the eighth grade. That's the bulk of my education. I went to St. Patrick's. Uh -huh. And after that, I goofed off in school. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I didn't, but. I think I'm learning more now in my life than I ever did. So how, how do you learn now? I mean, what do you do to follow this inquiry? Are you reading? What are you reading? Are you watching? What are you watching? I read a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, historical uh, information. I do a lot of research uh, on, the, on the internet, like the, the, the Jews, the, the Azores, Jewish Azores. Uh, the, the Brazilian Azores, you know, the Portuguese influence in, in, in Brazil mm -hmm. as far as being Jewish. Mm -hmm. Just to give you an, a, a, a story, uh, about maybe a month ago, uh, I, I met this couple. She was from Brazil, he was from Brazil, and her maiden name was Di, Di Ferreira. And uh, she was Brazilian, right? So, and uh, her husband was false. So I, I asked her, I says, you know, Ferreira is a Jewish surname. She says, you know, I did a DNA, and I found out that I'm part Jewish. So her DNA verified Ferreira as being of Jewish yeah, origin, right? Interesting, yeah. So instantly, it, it, and I said Matos was a Jewish surname. So as soon as I said that, the, uh, the relationship or the conversation became more personal. Sure. Just like... Maybe you're related. Where we're related, <laughs> and, 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 you know, and... Uh, we come from a, uh, the same geological background, and it and it it, it kind of broke down barriers. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it broke down barriers where, you know, it, we're not too different after all. You know, and when her and her husband, after talking for about ten minutes, she walks away and she says, "She's shalom." <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, that's one that's one uh, aspect of it, and another one. I I met these people uh, in uh, one hotel, and because I asked, "Where are you from? Where are you from?" This is, oh, we're from uh, Canada, but we immigrated from uh, Lebanon. Uh. I said, Lebanon, yeah. I said, oh, well, I said, uh, you know, a lot of people that uh, in Canada or here, and we have backgrounds that go, to the, go back to the Middle East. She said, yeah, we're all cousins. <laughs> I, so, and it became more of a, a friendly, you know, conversation. Sure. And, yeah, and when, when they left, bye, cuz. Sure, <laughs> <You know>? sure. <laughs> so, it, it kind of break down barriers, you know. You know, the, the funny thing here, and it's, 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 it's got to be discussed, is that in the Catholic Church, in the Catholic religion, as it has evolved from, from Jesus, really, there's an enmity about Jewish people. Because the Jews turned him in, uh, I guess, and caused the Romans to go after him. And, um, you know, and arguably they killed him. Um, and and that's built in that's built into the religion somehow and and I think the uh, you know the church has perpetuated that thought uh, but you tell me you were you were raised in the church uh, did you feel that do you feel that now and if you do is there a conflict for you you know when when I was a young man the church taught us that the Catholic Church taught us that that the, the Jews was responsible for Jesus' death and they were responsible for his persecution persecution and but I always maintain. Wait, wait a minute. He was a Jew. He was born a Jew. He practiced the Jews. 
he, he practices Jewish faith by praying with, with the, uh, the things that need to be. His mother was a Jew, and, and he loved his mother beyond anything. And, and, and I said, something got to be wrong. Something is not right. So I'm glad Pope John Paul, he came out when he was alive, and he publicly changed the concept or the thinking of the Catholic Church, the faith. He says, the Catholic Church, the Jews did not kill Jesus. He publicly said that. He said, the Jews are not responsible for the murder of Jesus. You know, uh, he says, we shouldn't be holding it against the Jews. They're not responsible. They, you know, they don't need to be held accountable because it's not their fault. You know, <clears throat> if Jesus was supposed to come into this world to be the Savior, you know, he would have come anyway, no matter what, and he would have suffered his fate anyway. So why persecute the Jews? Yeah. They shouldn't be held accountable. It was something that has happened. Yeah. And I've, I've, I've taken that, and, you know. And you don't see a conflict. I mean, you, mm -hmm. you, as far as you're concerned, there is no conflict. That you can, you can be raised as a Catholic, and you can be at least, uh, you know, in terms of your heritage, a Jew, and it, it all works together. Yeah, I can walk into a Jewish, Jewish synagogue, Emmanuel. <laughs> right here, the Emmanuel. Highway, yeah. I can walk in there and, 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 and sit down and worship in the Jewish custom. You know, it's, it wouldn't uh, hamper my faith in, in my Catholic faith because I, I, th I think it's, it, you know, it's, it's solid enough where I could go into a Jewish synagogue and, and practice it. Yeah. Jesus did it, you know. He went into a synagogue. He practiced, you know, yeah. he, he prayed to, yeah. you know. He was having the Last Supper. Yeah. It was a, it was a Seder. The, yeah, it was a, yeah, it, it was a, you know, Passover, it, it, it was Jewish. So you, you, if you look at it and... You, you don't be prejudiced in any way. You, you look at it and says, wait a minute, you know, it's, it's not right. It, it, it's not normal. Jewish people have endured so much hardship. In all, of, all the people of the world that have been scattered throughout the world, the Jewish people have maintained their faith for thousands of years. You, you know, look at, look at Israel now. They, they were scattered all over the world. But they came back and they, they created their own their own self again. Yeah. No so, other no other no other community has done really that. It's really interesting because because in, in a funny way, um, you know the diaspora happened in Spain. It happened, you know, they came to Spain and then probably because largely because of the Inquisition, they went to Portugal mm -hmm. and the Azores. It was part of the diaspora. Mm -hmm. And now the diaspora comes back together again. I mean the Jewish people come back in Israel. Mm -hmm. And they identify themselves, whether by Ancestry.com or not. I mean, my, my family is actually, interestingly, it's coming back together. People who didn't know each other are finding each other. They're finding they're related. And it's kind of a reverse diaspora. Um, it's very interesting. And, I, and I, this sounds like it affects you. So my question is, are, are you going to temple? Are you reading the, uh, the uh, Old Testament? Are you reading the Jewish prayer books? Are you going to Israel? Are you wearing the yarmulke on a regular basis? Are you putting the prayer, sh are you practicing Judaism? Uh, I'm not too familiar with the, the everyday practices, but I love to read the Old Testament because, you know, it's, it's, it's beautiful, beautiful poetry, beautiful stories, you know, uh, beautiful, you know, uh, Jesus gives one of the most, the greatest short story ever, ever written about the uh, prodigal son. And, you know, uh, and uh, it's so educational. It, it, it enlightens me, you know, as far as being, a, as being a Catholic, that you cannot be a Catholic. If they gave him Pope John Paul, you cannot be a Catholic without knowing your Jew, the Jewish faith. It's true. They're connected, aren't they're they? They're connected. They're, yeah. they're, they're connected. They're one. You cannot isolate Jesus as being only Catholic when he was... Yeah. He was a Jewish. He was. He practiced the Jewish faith. Yeah. You know. So you cannot make that. So Manny, going forward, you know, here we are. You're born in. I heard, I heard you say you were born in 1941. <laughs> yeah. I, I can do the math on that. <laughs> yeah. Where Where does it go for you? Where does it go now? I mean, how do you see your religious evolution going forward at your age and in your time and here in Hawaii? Well, I think uh, as far as my religious faith is concerned, I, it, it, it didn't uh, hamper my Catholic belief. I think it, it, it expanded it a, a lot more. It, uh, I have more respect when I, when, I, when I hear something that's coming out of uh, the state of Israel. I can understand their reasoning for how they think and how 
it's so important that they survive, and uh, and and I, I can put that that link. It you know it's it's so important that we understand history. You know and oh absolutely, and yeah. you know there is a right of return, so Jewish people can should do go back to Israel. Next year in Jerusalem, they say, means you want to return to Israel, to, you know, your roots, historically. And that's what you should do, Manny. I'm maybe too old. Go, I'm maybe we go 70. together. Maybe we go together you, you want check me, it out. Huh? You, I got, My I got side and your side, all right? Yeah? Well, hey, I, I would love to. You know, I, 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 I've never been, I never been west of the Mississippi. So. It was always the first time. <laughs> that was the first Manny time. Manny Matos, a, a Portuguese person in Hawaii <laughs> with a Jewish heritage, finding his Jewish heritage. So nice to Thank meet you. Thank you, my friend. Thank time. you. I appreciate it. Wonderful, Manny. Thanks. Thank you. Aloha.